All right, y'all, so we are going to continue on with these preseason prediction type videos. Today's videos, we're talking about the MVP trophy, and we're not gonna be talking about the favorites like the Anthony Davises, the Luka Doncic's, you know, maybe the James Harden's, none of those guys we're gonna be talking about today. I In this video, I want to give you five dark horse candidates who could potentially end up being in the running for the MVP by the end of the season. Now, obviously, in order to just qualify or even be in the concerning for this award, your team needs to have a good record, you know, preferably a top three seed in your conference. The only player in recent history who's been able to, you know, not do that and still win it was Russell Westbrook when the Thunder were a sixth seed and he was averaging a triple double. So, you know, in a, in a way, he really backed up his play. But outside of that, you obviously need to be putting up good stats. You need to play a majority of the season, not have any long or lingering injuries. And, you know, just, you just have to play good basketball. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. But with that being said, let's get into the five guys who I think could potentially be dark horses when it comes to winning the Most Valuable Player Award. First player is Damian Lillard of the Portland Trailblazers. Now, I've said this in a few recent videos, but I think it's a little blasphemous how Damian Lillard hasn't been in the MVP discussion much before. I actually went through and checked and the highest he's finished in terms of MVP shares in a year was fourth and that was the year where the Trailblazers made the conference finals. Now outside of that it was a lot of like seventh, eighth, you know barely even cracking the top 10 in terms of MVP voting but I think that you know this is he he's hitting his prime. This is Damian Lloyd's prime. He's going to be 30 during the season or he's going to be turning 30 at some point um, you know so right dead middle of his prime. He's been putting up 30 and 8 for, obviously he did it last year, but he's been putting up great numbers before with that. So I definitely don't see him having a drop off in terms of statistical components towards his case towards the award. And 30 and 8 should be plenty. We all know Damian Lillard is a ridiculous shooter, can lead a team, is a good enough playmaker that he's also dangerous in that aspect as well. But what's going to help his MVP case the most is that I think this is the best team that Damian Lillard has played on. Uh, maybe not overall, but in terms of Lillard in his prime and actually being able to produce as the number one option on the Trailblazers, this is easily the best one that he's played on. And, you know, they brought in a ton of wings and a ton of wing talent, just wing depth. They're getting healthy again. Nurkic is back. Zach Collins is back. CJ McCollum is going to be nice and healthy for the season. Now, all Damian Lillard has to go out there and do, maybe clinch a three seed, which I think is definitely possible in a Western Conference where those middle you know two through i don't say two but three through seven seeds are pretty much interchangeable at this point so i definitely think he is capable of getting them to that three seed and overall if he produces similar to what he did last year and the team finishes well i think his name should definitely be in that top five discussion at least for the mvp second dark horse candidate for the mvp is a little hometown favorite for me jason tatum now, when looking at where the Celtics are going to finish, I predicted them to finish second in the conference beyond the Bucks. And although Giannis and the rest of the guys over in Milwaukee are definitely a powerhouse when it comes to the regular season and just winning game after game after game, I definitely still think there is a chance that the Celtics could finish as the one seed. But, I mean, at worst, I really don't see them finishing worse than the three seed, maybe the four seed, you know, obviously barring any injuries or other wild circumstances. So... I think the Celtics are going to win plenty of games. Now, you also factor in Gordon Hayward's gone and off the team. Kemba Walker is going to be out for the start of the season due to his uh, lagging knee injuries. And it just, it's a perfectly paved way for Jason Tatum to step up, be the guy, be the MVP player that he's looking like he's going to turn into at some point in his career. If you look back over this past season, uh, Jason Tatum had one very memorable hot streak during the month of February. And across those 12 games that he played in that month, he averaged 30 points and 8 rebounds with a block and a steal per game. You know, looking back on what Dame did, Dame averaged that over a season, and you know, most MVP guys will average close to those numbers, so it's not like Tatum isn't capable of producing MVP level numbers. It was only a month span, but he showed that he can do it for a you know, longer period of time than what most players can. You know, if it hadn't been for the eventual suspension of the NBA last season, I think there's definitely a chance that Tatum could have even extended that hot streak, you know, farther and farther, maybe into the playoffs. But obviously, not being able to play live basketball for a while definitely uh, 
sent them back a little bit in terms of, you know, coming into the bubble a little bit cold. But, you know, with all that being said, if Tatum were to be in the discussion for the MVP, it would be pretty crazy because he's only 22 years old. And if we look back at the youngest MVP winners, Derrick Rose is also only 22 when he won. So this would be an incredible feat for Jason Tatum. Now, albeit it is his fourth season in the league compared to D. Rose's third season, but it'd be impressive nonetheless. Next candidate for a potential MVP case is Devin Booker of the Phoenix Suns. So for Booker's case, this is going to be entirely dependent on how well the Suns can actually finish in their conference this season. Uh, I currently just don't see them getting higher than maybe like a fifth seed. I can see them potentially entering that mix of what I said earlier with the Trailblazers, you know, that like three to seven seed. Right now I have them at the seven seed and they're just, you know, they're an upstart team. This is going to be their first year of competing into the playoffs, hopefully. And while Devin Booker definitely seems like he's going to turn a corner, you know, just due to the facts that this is the best team he's ever played on, paired with the fact that he's now playing with a star by his side and Chris Paul, I think his game is really going to elevate. We're definitely, I think we're going to definitely see Devin Booker averaging close to 30 points a game. His playmaking's on the rise. He's averaging six, uh, six assists per game over the past couple of seasons. So that probably could see a bump increase as well. In the end, like I said, Booker's definitely going to have the stats to make the case for the MVP award. It's all going to come down to how well the Suns can actually do. You know, maybe they really go off and they somehow end up as a three or four seed. And if Booker can have the stats to match it, maybe go above and beyond his, you know, what I predict, predict him to get with his 30 and 7. Maybe he goes out and averages like 33 and 8 and just goes absolutely berserk and maybe he does end up getting the MVP who knows uh again it's in my opinion it's gonna have a lot weighing down on it of whether the fact the Suns can actually win games or not but if you're looking for one very good reason to cast your votes for the Devin Booker MVP train uh he recently got the MJ earring so if that's enough to get you on board then that's you know so be it the fourth player on this list of potential MVP candidates is Donovan Mitchell. Last time we saw Donovan Mitchell, the Utah Jazz were blowing a 3-1 lead to the Denver Nuggets, but I don't entirely blame Mitchell because he was putting up some godly numbers in that playoff series. He had multiple 50-point games battling Jamal Murray as they went back and forth, and overall it was just an absurd series from Donovan Mitchell. The fact that he is just able to so consistently produce in big moments at such a young age is incredible. Now, hopefully we can see him transfer that into the regular season and start putting up some you know, crazy numbers there because that'd be insanely fun to watch. We all know that the Dwayne Wade comps have been there from day one for him and you know, D Wade was in countless MVP discussions, so maybe it's time for Mitchell to take that same leap. Also, not to mention, I was a bit harsh on the Jazz in my Western Conference seeding predictions. Um, you know, I kind of just forgot to factor in uh, the fact that the Jazz were only one and a half games out of the third seed prior to entering the bubble. Uh, they were in that fourth seed behind the Nuggets, and they're only like three games beyond the Clippers for the second seed as well, which in eight games would have been a tough task to overcome. But again, the fact that they were so close to that three seed that's all you really need to be in the MVP discussion. So if we can see the Jazz even just perform nearly as well as they did last year, or a little bit better at least, I think there is a world, there is a universe out there that the Jazz end up being a three seed, you know, just behind the great play from Donovan Mitchell. They're getting uh, Boyan Bogdanovich back from injury. They're missing his presence a lot in the bubble. And they also brought back Derek Favors, who, not necessarily the biggest name, but it will be a good addition to the Jazz as he can give them some small ball five action. It won't have to be Rudy Gobert on the court at all times for them to be productive. Derek Favors can slot in and give Gobert some time to rest, or just if the Jazz simply just want to use a smaller lineup that can be a bit quicker, a bit more agile. I Again, it's, it's a very similar Jazz team to what they had last season, but overall, I think they did get a little bit better. And again, if they can just recapture some of that stuff they're doing last season and add on to it a little bit, they finish the three seed, Donovan Mitchell takes a leap, the MVP case is there. And then the last, uh, I can't really say player for this one, just stay with me on this one, but um, so my last addition to this list is the duo of Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons for the 
Philadelphia 76ers. Now, again, just bear with me. Time in and time out, ever since Simmons and Embiid have you know become the duo that they are now, everyone has been saying that the Sixers have been a team with a lot of potential that could take the one seed in the East away from the Bucks, but it never happens. They always finish at the four seed, five seed, six seed, and just have terrible times in the playoffs. But we're finally seeing some progress from the franchise. Uh, they signed Doc Rivers, who, I, while I don't think he is necessarily the best coach, he is an upgrade over Brett Brown, or at least just some new blood in there. They got Daryl Morey, who's already been making some wonderful moves and getting rid of the Al Horford contract, bringing in Seth Curry, bringing in Danny Green to add some actual shooting to the roster. Now, the issue that still remains, they don't have a playmaking point guard. They have no one on that team who can perform an entry pass into the post to Joel Embiid outside of Ben Simmons. But, you know, they, that's something that they desperately still need. But outside of that, they made some great progress. If Rivers and Mori can somehow find a way to unlock and unleash the Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid that we all know and love and just make sure they can stay healthy, I think... You know, we've been saying it for the past couple of years, but this Sixers team could finally take the leap that we've been expecting for so long. Now, the reason that I have both Simmons and Embiid for this and not just one of them is I just honestly don't know who would take the, you know, take the uh, respect and just be the guy that gets nominated for the MVP. Uh, I kind of liken this to the idea of AD and LeBron how they both were kind of together for like you know if the Lakers if one of the Lakers were to have won the MVP award there would be a good discussion between who would actually win it between LeBron and AD I think it'd be a similar case for the Sixers in that if they do perform well enough and you know maybe the Sixers do snag a one seed this season you know crazier things have happened but if they do the team performs well I think there'd be a really great discussion around who deserves the MVP more out of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, just because they both bring such different yet dynamic, you know, skills and just abilities to the Sixers. Uh, it definitely, you know, it'd be a discussion for the ages. And with that being said, that will be it for this list and video. Drop your comments down below about what you think about these potential Dark Horse MVP candidates and maybe leave some down below of players you think might also be Dark Horse MVP candidates. Outside of that, you know, maybe hit the like button if you enjoyed this video or enjoy this type of content. Outside of that, as always, most importantly, thank you for watching.